Hello. Hi, are we live? Yes, thank you. Um, so thanks for coming. I know it's the last one of the session, so I'm kind of uh, closing the, the show. Yeah. And uh, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure it will be a super hit on the internet anyway. People just waiting that it's been uploading, so it'd be cool. Uh, so I'm here to introduce you about OpenStack Open Swift as a backend for Git. So that's a use case that we, uh, we, we used uh, at Innovance where I work. And uh, I thought like we would be pretty cool to share that uh, with you guys and how we did it. So at first, I'm sure you, you're dying to know who I am and uh, what about me. So I can tell you one thing is that I'm not that guy. Uh, so that guy, who's that guy, is the, uh, the actual author of, the, of that implementation. And uh, he, was, uh, he, he was supposed like, to come over, but unfortunately he wasn't able to make it final, uh, over here. So I took, uh, I took over because I thought like, we still need to uh, share that and uh, see how it goes. Uh, so we both work for Innovance. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a service company, managed services company. And uh, that does uh, pretty cool stuff like that. And as for myself, as you can see from uh, my t-shirt, I am a developer, a senior developer. And, uh, and I've been, uh, I've been uh, OpenStack Swift uh, core developer for since really the beginning of OpenStack, or even before OpenStack. So, so the first question, what is Swift? Uh, I, I wasn't going to do the what is Git, because I mean, I'm assuming that everybody knows Git. It's pretty popular. Uh, is there anyone who knows, who doesn't know Swift in the, in the room? OK, glad you came to our OpenStack uh, meetup. Cool, thank you. So I'm just going to uh, highlight the, the few things in case uh, the people on the internet doesn't know. Uh, so it's an object storage. It's not a file system. Uh, it's based on eventual consistency. Uh, it's everything when you access to it. It's based on the REST APIs. And uh, it's very scalable. Uh, it's, it can scale as much as possible the way you want. And it's been designed for that. And uh, it's what people have been coined the, the term of software defined storage. So it's the software who manage your, uh, your storage. And it's not like the hardware anymore that does uh, the thing. And all the intelligentsia, the scaling and stuff, and the hero checking, it's all happening in Swift. So it's a cool thing. It's a cool product. Git is cool. So we try to plug this thing together. The question is that, aside of being cool, why would you want to use Git with Swift? That's a fair question. Is, that, uh, is there really a need at first before developing that app? Uh, so the first question is like, why not? <laughs> it's cool, so why not? <laughs> but, uh, but when you dig into it, like, you see some problems when you, use, uh, like, when you do like, the normal kind of uh, workflow with, um, with Git, which is like using behind a file system, or maybe you can have like an NFS share or whatever. Uh, you, so what happened? What's the, what's the issue with it? Is that uh, you have to perform the backups of your repo regularly. So you have to do like performing all those backups. So you, it's like it's pretty valuable thing and, uh, and you want to back, to, to back the thing up. So People can argue that uh, Git is distributed by, def by default, so all the commit history and stuff. But uh, in some cases, like you want to have uh, that endpoint uh, being always available and uh, be able to restore because when you use like in a model that just uh, we, there is a master on the end. Uh, you, uh, you so when you have like when you have to extend the master repo and uh, you, when you start to grow like in a very very large way, and you end up in a smaller Partition, you need to resize that partition, so so it's it's kind of a more manual and operational thing to do, and uh, and the thing is that most of the time is that that thing you have to manage it by yourself, and it's not available everywhere uh, because it's another piece of uh, in your infrastructure. So in an OpenStack way, is that uh, is that uh, usually you have your OpenStack? If you have your OpenStack Swift, why you can't use it? And uh, it's not fun. It's just like, uh, so we have all that new things going on with the cloud and all the services and blah, 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 and things. So, so you have uh, your Swift and you want to know, like, would it be cool like, to use that, uh, that for that? So what are the benefits? That's a, that's a fair question. And uh, the advantage of uh, the benefits of using Swift is really like uh, the, 
the contrary of uh, the, the disadvantage of not using it. It's because uh, you're going to be sure that it's going to be safe, that your data is, being, uh, is going to be put like properly. Uh, it's going to have uh, the, the capability of easily extend your, uh, your storage. And, uh, and, and really, like Swift has been designed for no single point of failure, so you're sure it's going to be always available. And, uh, and in an open stack environment, as I said before, it's like it's already there. It's like you don't have like, to spin up like a file server old school way. You can uh, just use whatever Swift you have. Or in another way, you can even use the public provider from an, uh, like the Swift or another public provider, like uh, HP Cloud or Rackspace Cloud. So you can have backups everywhere if you wanted. Or even GitHub. If so. Uh, so now, like, let's get deep more in the technical terms and uh, how things, uh, how everything works. Uh, so how Git internal works? It just, it's not really used for everyone. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of, it looks complicated. But uh, so I put like a nice schema. Um, so I'm hoping that you can see. Yeah, you actually can see. Cool. So, so what's the workflow of that? Uh, of um, of uh, Git, so you it's it's based on Git fetch pack. So when you do a fetching, when you fetch like a new change in your Git repo, so what happens? It's like you you have a Git fetch pack which is run on the clients. It connect and uh, and start like the Git upload pack on the server side. The Git upload pack is going to get the reference from the backend. That backend is going to send the non reference to the Git fetch pack on the other side where like he would know like what's the reference of the server at that time. And, uh, and the client is going to send the non-reference and the, the one that he wants compared to whatever it gets sent before. So after that, git upload pack on the server is going to build a custom pack. It's going to read the objects from the backend server and with all the blob, the trees, the tag, and the commits, and it's going to send the custom pack back to the client where it's going to build locally and it's going to uh, be available on your Git repo, on the client Git repo. So that's, uh, that's the basics, like the way it works for Git fetch. So on the push, so you have the fetch on the push. The way it does is like it does a, a Git send pack. It uh, connects to uh, and start the Git receive pack, like the same way we saw that on a, on a fetch. Same thing, can, uh, same thing as before, it's going to read the reference from the backend server. And it's going to know the reference, and uh, and after it's going to uh, send to know, it's going to to tell like what was the what was the action with like an update, a create, a delete, to update the reference, until uh, until the git receive pack is going to verify from the backend server, and uh, until it's going to uh, with the custom pack. Sorry, so really like it's uh, almost exactly the same as the push as the fetch, sorry, but uh, in a push way. So it's going to compute the difference between the two and going to send it back uh, the object. So that's, uh, that's been uh, proven like pretty scalable like for, uh, for Git and uh, pretty efficient, the way it sends uh, things uh, over. Uh, so, so, so yeah, so now like, we want to know uh, how did we plug that to Swift? So how do, we, how do we do that? So now you have that. So the... the the way we did that. Uh, at first, the thing that we didn't want to do, and which was the obvious way, was to not modify the, 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 git, the binaries, the git client binary. So we didn't want like, to go inside the git binary and start to, uh, start to modify to add a new backend that would connect to our object stores and uh, do an abstractions and things. Uh, so why is that? Uh, mostly it's because you don't want to do a fork first. That's uh, the basics uh, of open source. But you could have a, a plugin system that would take time, and uh, it would be you know you need like to uh, handle like different architecture, uh, different uh, type of servers and stuff, and uh, it will be available right now, and it will not be available for stuff that's not uh, like the Git binary, but you have as well other implementation of Git, so we cannot use that. So what we did, we used a pure Python Git, Git library called Dulwich. So uh, I don't know if anyone heard about Dulwich. Okay, cool. So someone, nice. So I have a full side for explaining what Dulwich is doing. So Dulwich is a is a pure Python library that uh, that implement the Git protocol, 
and uh, be able like to uh, to literally implement a, a git server the way uh, the way you want so the way it works it's like you create uh, and manage the loose objects so the loose objects is like blob trees commit and tags that's things that are happening in a git repo is uh, is managing the pack files and the pack indexes so the pack files is like the the, the packing of the full uh, stack uh, or when it gets sent like over between uh, the client and the server and is uh, it's implementing the smart the git smart protocol uh, which is a uh, git upload pack and git receive pack uh, and the cool thing about Dolwich is that he has a way to uh, to to provide like interface interfaces to uh, storage backend so you could say that the storage backend is uh, is is pluggable in a way that you're going to where you're going to upload your uh, when you're going to upload your blobs at the end. So that's uh, that's like that that's, that's a, that that was a pretty cool thing, and that's what we we went for. Um, so how does it work in a nice in a nice way? Yeah, you can see that cool. Uh, so you so in a, in an environment like that, you just end up like to have a Dolwich proxy. So that Dolwich proxy is going to sit between the Swift cluster and the, the Git client. So really, you're going to upload, you're going to do the Git push or Git, or Git fetch from that URL, and the um, the Dolwich the Dolwich uh, proxy is going to take care of uploading on the Swift cluster and uh, take care of uh, the create, delete, and uh, and uh, all the blobs things. So that's pretty transparent. I mean, we didn't need to have a custom middleware inside uh, Swift. We don't need to have, a, to have like a modified version of uh, the Git binaries or anything uh, else. We just need to have a, just a piece, an infrastructure that can sit on the Swift proxies where you can, uh, where you can, uh, where it does the translation for you. So, as I said before, it's like we did a we did a backend implementation called Swift Repo, and uh, let's see how it works. Um, so it it doesn't use so the the way we did that, we didn't want to do the standard way to store Git reference like one file by reference. So that's what Git uh, is doing usually. Uh, we didn't want to because uh, doing a lot of uh, small files reading and uh, a lot of uh, a lot, you, you would make a lot of HTTP requests when you start to send like bunch of blobs. So what uh, what uh, what what it does is like it's going to use the pack format, it's going to pack them those objects with an index into it, and it's going to store those index and those packs straight inside the object server. Uh, so, in addition to the index server, to to handle like the mapping of the object and the pack, where either, where, where where they belong or where they're stored, uh, we add like the info object. So that that info object that's stored inside uh, the Swift would uh, would tell you like where all the information and the packs are stored, and it's use uh, it's use the range request uh, features in Swift to uh, upload the objects and the packs like in a concurrent ways. So the, it would like do like range headers and uh, to be able like to upload the packs in a more efficient way. So that was, that was the way we, we started to, uh, to, 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 to do so. Uh, so we implemented that, we started to implement that and uh, we started like to, so the first thing first, what he wanted to do is uh, is how does uh, does it work really? It does, is that really working? Uh, is that is it like efficient or anything like that? That was the good uh, the first question. So we started to benchmark it, and uh, and uh, the benchmark. So we had like different uh, testing scenario. We had uh, GitHub, which is a Git client, uh, Git Git client from the from the Innovance network, so from uh, from our company network, and that goes direct directly to GitHub. So that's what the standard things like that most developers are using, and you had the, the Dolwich uh, Swift, which is uh, which is uh, the which is the one that we did with the implementation, and uh, that goes from the Innovance network, and it goes there like to the Rackspace compute uh, uh, Rackspace compute uh, gateway, that goes over Rackspace cloud files. So we use uh, Rackspace UK 
uh, cloud because because uh, well, I used to work there as well. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so that was just uh, one of the tests uh, that we we're making, and we used three different size of the repo. So so Swift Sync, uh, eDeploy, and Swift. So those have different. Uh, so the one is like small one, a medium one, and Swift, which is pretty big and a fairly big, uh, big uh, open source project. All right. Um, so so let's. Uh, so when we start, so how did it work? Uh, we had the the full repo push. Uh, so so when you look at it, it's like the the small ones. So Swift Sync. Uh, so I think the the slide is mostly uh, it's not really well aligned. So the first one is the one that uses uh, GitHub, and after you get like the Dolwich Swift. So so you see like on the Swift thing itself, which is a small the small repo, like it's not that uh, it's not that um, it's it doesn't it doesn't do uh, it, it's not that much different. Same goes for medium direct, uh, medium repo, is that uh, you uh, get uh, you get e deploy. And uh, and GitHub, uh, uh, sorry, the e deploy one. It's like it's almost the same. It's like you have a few overhead, but it's not that much. But if you look over like a super large uh, repo, then uh, the the Dolwich version is like is way uh, is way uh, is it takes more time. It, it takes way more time. Um, so why is that? Uh, is that because on the on the back end, on the Swift storage, you can have rate limit. So you can end up like having a rate limit of your of your Swift. So you not be able like to send like as much as possible for the first time. And that was the main issues. Um, the the developer who did that, Fabien, uh, as a, I was saying, told me that he had, he had like a few implementation the way he would uh, he would increase the pack and optimization that was possible to do. And uh, and it was his plan, like to improve those kind of thing for a really really large directory. So it's still there's still like some work uh, to do on that. Um, so so when you know the, over the clone, when you start to do the clone of the previous uh, push project, uh, that's a bit the, the same as before, except like for large projects, it's even slower. So and that optimization will need to be done. So for small and medium, there is no problem at all. You can put in your Swift like easily, but uh, for really large ones, like it start, uh, there is much more work to do and optimization to do. So, um, so so that's uh, so that's mostly that's mostly what we did. Uh, there is uh, the, like it's it's out there. So we we implemented that in Dolwich. There is a large. Uh, there is a large uh, pull request on the GitHub of Dolwich that has been sent, which uh, say that uh, which uh, which implement that thing. So it's not it's not it wasn't merged because it's a very very large patch, and uh, people were not. Uh, I mean uh, the the author of the of the project wasn't uh, wanted like to do it in different ways. So it's still available uh, to uh, to use, and hopefully like it should be merged uh, uh, sometime soon. So that's uh, that's one of the things. Um, there is, there is, uh, it's almost done, but I have uh, other thing to talk about is that, uh, for my slide, is that a lot of people have been asking the question about eventual consistencies. How do you deal with eventual consistencies? So, yeah, I know I see the ZeroVM guy uh, <laughs> nodding. So, the, zero, so um, the eventual consistency could be a problem. So it could be a problem, but it's not really a problem from the client's point of view, because the client's point of view is like he's going to retry if he doesn't. So if he doesn't going to get the right reference, it's going to get like an older reference. And then until like the client is going to do a pull to get the right reference, and for the next time it's going to get the right thing. So so from a, like clients, I mean uh, Git clients doesn't need to have uh, like the exact reference at the right time. It's just going to update uh, concurrently, and then it will be fine. So because of the workflow, doesn't need to have like, a strong consistency, and uh, it can work with eventual consistency. Then it's not that much of a problem. And please. Yeah, what happens if it's a split head? Like two clients can 
like Swift can trivially have split head. Yes. Here, this client will push with this repository, this client will push with this repository, and then the replicator will not be able so, to. So the question, is, the question is what happens if there is a split head? And uh, when you have like the two clients working uh, working uh, working at the same time, so in that case, is like the last one would win, and and since like Git itself would take care of the differential, since the last one would be happening, then you or or one I don't know if you see when you start to push to Git, and it, like the reference is like an older version of what you have, or like it's not a newer version, then it would fail. The clients would fail then that's what will happen in that case, is that uh, only the last one would win, and uh, the other guy will need to merge by, by, uh, by the developer will need to merge by hand his, uh, his, uh, his Git repo. So, that's, uh, so that's, mostly, that's mostly what happened as well when you have like Git smart protocol. I mean, it's the same thing. It's like you can have a concurrency problem, and uh, when the push at the same time, then you get, uh, it's up to the developer like to do the merge themselves of that uh, concurrency. So it's a bit of a workaround. But what if you're pushing different branches? Then there's no merge to really be done, but they're still, they're still stepping on each other's toes. Well, if you push different branches, then you have different objects. So, you, you're gonna, so you, you, you maybe can have a problem when uh, you push like the same branches, but it's going to be another commit ID as well. So you're not going to be a conflict. It's going to be another, sorry, it's going to be another hash, object hash, in that case. So it's it can't be it's always unique. So you can't have a problem with it. It's only it's only the only concurrency problem can happen would be on the um, on the same branch on the pack uh, on the pack file. But each object of Swift always always are independent to each other. Of course, yeah. So you can you cannot have a problem on that one. I think. I don't think it's a pack per branch. Like it's a it's a full pack per. Uh, f I don't know how it works exactly for that for the branch side. I haven't uh, had the information, but I guess it is aware of uh, the pack of uh, of the branch. Yeah, I think it's a global one. I guess that's what I, that's what I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, the pack, the pack, if it's not uploaded, if it's not updated at the same time, then it will be the next one will be updating it. So that's uh, that's. It's, it started like to try to look. It never like we 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 actually had question about. It. I mean that's what you told me. He had uh, plenty of question about eventual consistency, and he tried to figure out like a way to bring, to uh, to break the workflow. And he was telling me that uh, there was no due of the workflow of Git being unique, and that each even like each tags have a different uh, like the update of a tag is another ID as well as a ID. Then you would not be able to break. The only thing is that. Uh, is that you're going to have like a last version win kind of thing that's going to upload. Yeah, GitHub will have the same problem kind of as well. So that's a if you if you I think uh, I think I'm mostly over on the on the one. Uh, if you have any questions or on the things, other questions, feel free to go to the mic so other people can hear. On the on the internet, and uh, yeah, so that's it, I guess. I hope uh, you enjoyed. It.